Hi there, I'm Duran McDermott bringing you this economic update on Bulgaria, Hungary and Turkey. I'm joined today by Svitem Vajiski from CEE Market Watch. So Bulgaria's economic growth bounced back after dipping in the second quarter when the economy shrank. So what were the reasons for this unexpected dip we saw and how did it manage to get back on track? The, the issue with Bulgaria is that the uh, the dip in, in the second quarter was really unexpected. Uh, it was, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it was not something which we were looking forward to, uh, since we mainly explained it with the political uncertainty in the country following the spring parliamentary elections. Uh, you know that uh, the political situation became very uh, shaky after the elections. It and we, we think that this situation really contributed to, to keeping domestic demand down during the quarter. Uh, now, in this sense, uh, the recovery in the, in the third quarter, which we observed with a relatively strong 1.5% uh, annual growth, uh, we view it as an adjustment over the problems in the second quarter. Uh, and uh, it was mainly driven by, uh, by exports, actually, uh, that you see growth, but uh, there was also a uh, recovery in domestic demand as well. Uh, so uh, we had a relatively balanced growth structure in Bulgaria in the third quarter, uh, and we expect this to, to remain the case in the following periods as well, because uh, uh, really uh, what, we, what we observe is that the Eurozone recovery, which has been expected for a long time, uh, is finally beginning to materialize, uh, and we expect this to to support uh, Bulgarian exports and uh, gradually filter to to domestic demand. Uh, so basically, uh, the disappearance of the negative impact of the political situation in the second quarter has uh, led to this adjustment in in Q3, and uh, the support which the country gets from a improving external environment should should really boost performance going forward. And moving on to Turkey, it has major problems with inflation and its current account deficit. So how can it overcome these problems? Inflation and the balance of payments are really uh, the main challenges for Turkey economic policy, uh, in my opinion. Turkey has a relatively bad track, track record in uh, keeping inflation down. Uh, so it's it's a recurring problem for the country, and the same can be said for the current account, which is really not surprising because Turkey is speaking for the current account. Turkey is facing difficult situation because there are very deeply embedded uh, factors which produce these current account problems. One of them is the relatively young population of Turkey, which uh, is related to very low domestic savings. Uh, this practically means that the country has to attract foreign savings in order to finance its investment and growth, uh, and basically leads to, to a high current account deficit. And another factor is, of course, the energy dependence on Turkey, which uh, the country really needs to, to import a lot of energy goods in order to little domestic sources. And uh, the need to import oil, for example, from Russia or Iran, uh, keeps the, the energy import bill of the country high and adds to the current count. So basically, the country has uh, a three-pronged strategy to, to, to deal with this problem. One of them is to to stimulate domestic savings, for a scheme to, to stimulate pension savings by the population. And uh, the second uh, strategy, strategy has been to, to stimulate investments, uh, but uh, specifically investments in sectors in sectors which can add to export growth and thereby reduce the, the foreign trade deficit and the current account deficit. And the third point has been to address the energy bill uh, situation by diverse, diversifying energy supply or, see, or seeking every opportunity to, to increase uh, domestic energy production. Uh, but basically all of these measures can be expected to have an effect in the longer term. In the shorter term, we, we do think that the problem with the balance of payments will, will remain in place. And uh, the problem is even compounded by, by the fact that the uh, financing structure of the of the current account deficit is not very favorable because it comes mainly from uh, portfolio and debt inflows which can 
uh, go out of the country re- relatively quickly if uh, things turn to the worse. So at the end, uh, this this is really a policy challenge, and uh, we really think that it will constrain uh, economic performance uh, in the country in the in the short to mid terms. It is it is a problem when the country needs to rely on external flows to to finance domestic growth uh, because really. Uh, the external environment is volatile, especially especially in the current conditions. And then Turkey cannot count on uh, capital flows keeping keeping their pace uh, every time. With regard to inflation, you know that uh, inflation was uh, was really strong uh, recently, uh, was quite uh, quite above seven seven percent, close close to eight. Uh, in October, which is uh, very much above uh, the central bank projection for the end year inflation of 6.9. There was some positive news with inflation in uh, in November when inflation decelerated to to 7.3. But uh, this was partly due to to a technical effect uh, in uh, clothing prices, uh, which were... uh, affected by some difficult, dif- different seasonalities of uh, holidays. Mm-hmm. So uh, really, uh, we were looking for some deceleration uh, in inflation going forward due to favorable dynamics of food prices. Uh, but uh, there are also uh, factors working in the reverse direction. Uh, recently, there were some uh, announcements by a uh, local uh, fuel producer that they will rise that, that they will raise gas prices, uh, and uh, we expect that to to work in the other direction and to largely prevent inflation from falling back to the central bank expectations. Uh, so yes, uh, Turkey has has a bad track record of keeping inflation in bay, and uh, this seems to to be the case uh, in the several next months as, as well. And looking at Hungary, its economy is starting to recover. So what are the driving factors and what will you be closely monitoring? Economic growth in Hungary recovered in Q3 and the structure of growth was uh, indeed uh, very much balanced, uh, divided between uh, domestic and external demand. Uh, The problem with Hungary is really that the jury is still out if the unorthodox policies used by the Hungarian government are really really going to work uh, in the longer term. Uh, in the short term, uh, the the situation looks really well, and uh, we are quite bullish on the Hungarian economy in the in the next year or so. Uh, but still, the high tax burden imposed by the um, by the government and uh, the difficult situation of the Hungarian banking sector uh, they pose concerns for the longer term, and we are not sure that the growth we observe today is really sustainable. Thank you very much. Well, viewers, do stay tuned as we have plenty more coming your way.